Welcome to the Mask Fan Attic. That's not really the host I am. Welcome to the Mask Fan Attic. Once again, Mask Fanatics, always nice to see you up here in one of the various dark corners of the dark and creepy and spooky attic above Horror Hotel where we look for interesting masks. Hence the title. Uh, nice to see you. Come on in. Get out of those um, dry clothes and put on something wet and uh, well. Uh, <clears throat> tonight's, uh, tonight's piece is very rare indeed. Now you know a lot of these masks were mass produced and there are thousands of them. Sometimes they're just artist pieces and there are only a few. Tonight's happens to be uh, a one of a kind. And the only way you can get any rarer than that is by not existing. One of these weeks maybe we'll do a segment on a mask that doesn't exist. But for tonight we're doing this one of a kind one made by the late great Harry Inman. Now Harry Inman uh, spent his whole life in Salinas, California. Uh, he did business ever since the mid 80s as Dark Studios. And it was a dark day for the mask community on uh, January 29th of 2011 because that was the day we lost Harry. Uh, he succumbed to a heart attack at the age of only 46 in uh, January 2011 and uh, boy we miss him in the monster community. He was one of the best artists out there. He was a tremendously talented uh, sculptor and designer and one of my favorite things about uh, getting masks from Harry is that the quality was always so high. He sent me the really thick castings like he knew that I liked. They were really sturdy and solid and, and they're gonna last forever. Most of them will outlive me I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of Harry's, uh, I think, most beautiful creations, of his many beautiful creations, was this one. This is Shuna Sasi. That's S-H-U-N-A space S-A-S-S-I. Shuna here, if she looks familiar to you, that's because uh, you may have seen her in the Clive Barker movie Nightbreed from 1990. Shuna was, uh, well, everybody called her the Quill Woman. She's sort of a Sort of a human porcupine type of uh, creature. The monsters in, in Nightbreed don't make any sense at all. They're just all kinds of monsters, so there's no specific uh, theme to them. There's no thematic connection between the monsters. They're just various and sundry monsters, just the way you like them. Now, Shuna here is uh, something that was uh, commissioned, as it happens, by none other than Laura, my wife. You guys know Laura, right? Yeah, you met Laura. Laura knew that I sort of uh, fell in love with this character when Nightbreed came out. Laura was jealous, a little bit, a little jealous of my relationship with, with this chick. But anyway, um, <clears throat> she actually put Harry up to it and commissioned him to make this as a Christmas present to me back in 1990. And uh, I've had her ever since. Uh, the, the mask, I mean, not Laura. I've had her ever since too, but I had Laura before. I did, but anyway, uh, yeah, original owner. Yeah, and the reason it's one of a kind isn't that it was supposed to be one of a kind, it's just that it was too hard to complete all this and, and make it as detailed as it's really supposed to be and Harry had problems with the mold and the castings weren't coming out looking too good. Uh, I know there are, there's at least one that's painted black and green like a snake woman where he just used this, with none of this, none of the quills or the hair uh, like this, just, just black and green like a snake woman. There may be two like that, and then there were a couple of other castings that were really bad and had thin spots and bubbles and were sort of crinkled and distorted, and there just wasn't a good way to, uh, to save them. So Harry gave up on this one pretty early on because of the complications of making it, the cost, the time involved, and the fact that the mold, for some reason, wasn't cooperating and wasn't yielding nice uh, castings. So this turned out to be the only one of these. Now. Uh, this was uh, presented to me uh, unpainted and it is foam filled. You see the bottom there? Harry always used this really nice rigid solid foam when he foam filled his mask. Boy, I love that. I love that that Harry did that. Why doesn't anybody do that these days? Hmm? Uh, maybe somebody does. If you do, I didn't mean to insult you just then. I just, I don't know of anybody who does right now. But anyway, Shuna here was uh, was presented to me unpainted but foam filled as I was saying and Harry unfortunately did not think to put holes to be used as sockets for these quills in the sculpture and as you can tell there there are over 250 holes in there and uh, well 
uh, the, those I had to drill those in with a little little Dremel tool drill bit and then uh, I painted her up and Laura added the quills which are made of uh, plastic uh, what would you call the plastic stick like things that they use what they use these for is whiskers on mascot costumes like if you see a, you know an Easter bunny or a cat or something with big whiskers this is the stuff they use for the whiskers and then in the movie it looks like the ones in the back just sort of hang down so we just use plastic tubing for the ones in the back and then these top ones each one had to be cut and heated up and bent which took forever heated up and bent so that it didn't stick straight out so it would have the right sort of curve to it and then uh, the tips sprayed with a little bit of brown paint because it looks like the one in the movie had these kind of gray quills but they're slightly browner on the tips so that had to be done on each one of these so this took forever and then Laura added the hair on the shoulders which again is pretty accurate to the way she looks in the film uh, these strange marks on her face possibly ingrown quills I'm thinking uh, those are just painted on by me but one uh, one interesting uh, note another thing you might not find interesting is that over the years several of my friends have have told me they think this looks like Laura yeah you know, Laura, I don't, I don't see it, really. I don't think it really does look like... I mean, it's female, obviously, but really? You think this looks like Laura? I, I don't really think it looks that much like... For one thing, Laura has a proper nose. But anyway, beautiful thing, I think, and I've always, uh, always loved it, and it's probably one of those things that if I only had, like, my top ten masks uh, in the universe that I could keep and I wouldn't sell, she would probably be one of them because she's just... Uh, She's just as good as it gets, you know? Very sad that there aren't more of them. Uh, although I believe a couple of other artists have tried their hand at Shuna since then. I know, um, okay, I know, I know one artist that did, but I don't know if he still makes it. So I, I won't say that he still makes it because I don't know. But this is the only one from poor old Harry. And Harry, we miss you. And um, we hope you're making masks in the next world. And, um, well, there you have it. That's all I have to say about Shuna, so until next time, please remember, <clears throat> I'm counting on you to help me clean up this attic, so when you come back next time, bring a shovel. <laughs>